Hey guys, today we are beginning to look at elapsed time. So before we get started, there's a few different things we're looking for in word problems when we're looking at elapsed time. One of those things is start time. One of those things is elapsed time. And one of those things is end time. So being able to find these three things in a word problem is going to help us know what's missing and what we're looking for. Um, start time is if they give you what time something began. Elapsed time is the amount of time, minutes or hours that have passed. And then end time is what time something ends. So let's take a look at our first word problem. Peggy went to the grocery store at 5.32. She returned home with cereal, milk, and eggs at 5.59. How long was she gone? We don't really need to know that she bought cereal, milk, and eggs. That doesn't really matter in our problem. But we do know that this is our start time, 5.32. And here is that on the clock. The hour hand is between the 5 and the 6. So we're going to look back at the 5. And this would be 30. 31, 32, and she returned home at 5.59. That is our end time, 5.59. So what we're missing is our elapsed time. How much time passed from the time she left to the time she got home is what we're trying to figure out. So I can see 5.59 here. A lot of people would look at this our hand pointing toward the 6, but it has not reached that o'clock yet, so it's only 5.59 because it has not re the minute hand hasn't reached the 12. So we're going to look at two different strategies for figuring out how much time has passed or elapsed. The first strategy is a number line. So we're familiar with number lines. Um, we've seen them for fractions and for number talks. So let's take a look at our start time, 532, and I'm going to put it down here at the beginning of my number line. And my end time is 559, so that's going to go at the end of our number line. We're trying to get from 532 to 559, so I'm going to take some small hops to get from 532 to 559. So let's make hops of 10. If I add 10 to 532, it will put me at 542. And then if I add 10 more, that will put me at 552. If I add 10 more, it would put me to 562. And 562 is not a time on our clock because our minutes, once they reach 59, they start the next hour. We don't go to 60, we start back at o'clock. So I'm right here at 552. My hour is staying the same, five, and I'm only going to five, so I'm not worried about that hour place. But I am looking here. My tens place in my minutes is now where I need it to be, but I need to get the ones up to nine. So I'm going to count from 2 up to 9 and see how many more minutes I need to add in order to get from 2 to 9. So 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59. I counted up 7 on my fingers. So I'm going to add 7 minutes to get to 59. I need to figure out how, much total, how many total minutes I added here in order to figure out how much time has passed. So 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 7 is 27 minutes that have gone by. So how long was she gone? 27 minutes. Here is another strategy called a T-chart. So what we're going to do here is put our start time and our end time. And I'm trying to get from 532 to 559. So again, I'm going to break it down and count up in smaller chunks. So first I'm adding 10 minutes. And that 10 minutes will take me to 542. So I'm adding 10 minutes to 532 up here, my start time. 
I haven't reached my end time, 5.59, so I'm going to go ahead and add 10 more minutes. And that takes me from 5.42 to 5.52. And again, if I add 10 more minutes, that would put me at 5.62, and that's gone too far. I'm trying to get to 5.59, so I'm going to count up again from 2 to 9, because my minutes are in the right Place. I just need to get that ones place up. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 plus 7 more minutes takes me to 5.59. And I always like to circle it when I reach my end time so I know I'm done. And then I'm just going to add all of these minutes together to see how many total minutes elapsed which again gives me the same answer of 27 minutes. So these are just two different strategies that you can use to figure out your elapsed time. We'll take a look at one more for some extra practice. So our problem, remember we're looking for our start time, our elapsed time, and our end time. So let's see out of those three things what this problem provides for us. Michael went for a bike ride at 412. He returned from his ride at 441. The word return just means he got back, he finished, he was done. How long did it take, did he take to ride the bike? So we started at 412, that's our start time. He ended at 441, so what we're missing, what we're trying to figure out is what's the time between 412 and 441? How much time passed while he was out riding his bike? So we're going to draw our number line and start at 412, that's our start time, and go to 441, our end time. I'm going to again take hops of 10. So plus 10, 4, 12, plus 10. Remember, my hour is staying the same, so I'm not doing anything to the hour place. I'm just looking here in the minutes. So 4, 12 plus 10 is 4, 22. Plus 10 is 4, 32. Plus 10 is... Uh-oh, I can't add 10 because that would be 442, and he ended at 441, so that doesn't work. Let me erase that. So now I've realized that I've got to go by um, 1s instead of 10s. So I'm going to count from 32 to 41 in my head. Which would be adding 9 more minutes. So the total time that passed was 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 9, 29 minutes. He was gone. Um, so again, over here with your T-chart, you can start at 412 and end at 441. If you add 10 minutes, it's going to be 422 plus 10 minutes will be 432. If I added 10 more, it would take me to 442, and I want to stop at 441. So then I've got to count up, and I know I need to add 9 more to get to 441. And once I reach that end time, I'm going to circle it and stop, and then add my minutes up on this side, which is 29 minutes. I hope this was helpful for you guys in working with elapsed time when you're given a start time and end time within the same hour. Thanks for watching. Check out my channel for more videos on third grade Common Core Math.